Hey guys, this is John, Second Chance Productions. You guys know who I am. You know, been around forever. Uh, today I'm here to do this video. That way I wasn't interrupted. I usually go live with you guys, but in this particular case I wanted to do this uninterrupted. I am here to announce that on September 11th and 12th, my next birthday bash, and we were going to do Two Now Cancer uh, for the children of Texas Children's Hospital to help them with their cancer. I will, at that time, be stepping down and retiring from active duty. And what is active duty? Active duty is me coming out, running the stages, hosting events, things like that. Uh, all that is going to be put to the side. Uh, it's time to move forward into a new adventure. My new adventure is going to be Second Chance Foundation, led by myself, Carmen Poole, Kevin Hamlin, Christy Cunningham, of course, legendary outlaw Dave is part of our board. Uh, Sui from the TV show Pit Bulls and Pro Lease. And you know, my, my brother from another mother, Stevie Ray, from the Harlem Heat, is going to be running around there somewhere, always supporting me. So, with that said, we got a lot of surprises for Two Now Cancer. There is things that uh, we do have nationals uh, set up to join us that will be announced in 2021. And I promise you, there's a lot of big surprises. I got a lot of friends that are coming because this will be my final active hosting uh, participation. It's time for me to move forward. Uh, I do want to send out thanks to people like the BFB Rock Club, Shane, Frankie, Bill, which have been supporting me for as long as I've been pretty much <laughs> in the industry. Um, Justin, Carmen, and Dana over at the Wildcatter Saloon, which have been super supportive, and you know what we got going on over there. We're doing a lot of great things. Uh, Thomas from Scout Bar. Um, I mean, you could go back in my history, uh, you know, to when I was in GSP TV Houston when George Yasconza found me, you know, and we put shot, popped me on TV to start this whole renegade thing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people to thank. Heck, I did 18th Street Pier. I've done Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin. Um, San Antonio, Corpus, shows everywhere across uh, Louisiana. It's been a great experience. A lot of love for all the bands and all the support I've had over the years. But it's time to move forward. Like I said, the Second Chance Foundation is launching September 11th and 12th with Two Now Cancer. And we're going to donate the money to the Texas Children's Hospital and make a difference for the kids. We will see you guys there. We're going to launch uh, a project I've been working on behind the scenes with a lot of my friends. Second Chance Productions is move, uh, I'm going to launch uh, Second Chance Foundation. Uh, the board will have Carmen Poole. Christy Cunningham, Kevin Hamlin, uh, the mighty outlaw Dave, the legendary guy there, uh, Suey from the TV show Pit, Blue, Pit Bulls and Pearlies, and then of course he, my big brother Stevie Ray will be roaming around doing his thing with me. He's always supported me for over 30 years now, so I know he'll be involved in some for, form or fashion. Uh, it was a tough decision to make, but it was the right. It's the right decision to do is to move forward and to work on another project so with that said i'll let chase uh, feed the questions from audio realm studio and we'll answer them the best i can so <clears throat> i'm sure a lot of people will be expecting you know questions to be asked about what what's to come you know the second chance chance foundation all that stuff uh but i want to take it a little different uh place uh you know over your career, you know, you've met and, and, you know, met so many people and done so many, you know, special things, but I don't think that the majority of, of the people that you know or know of you really know you uh, on, you know, a more personal level. So I want to kind of give them the opportunity to kind of, you know, get a little more insight. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you some questions about, you know, just your career. Uh, so people can kind of know you a little closer. Uh, so what you've been doing this, what, 30, 40 years? Well, 
it's been, I've been active roughly 12. Mm -hmm. I was back in the early days. I did Outlaws of uh, Law Dave 101 KLOL. Right. That's how I first got interested in it. Uh, I did a street team, uh, and of course today we're very good friends. Right. Um, then of course I went into uh, different realms of my career life, uh, families and whatnot. I did a lot of DJing for radio, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, Five Eyes Wide literally asked me to come out to a show and check it out. Uh, back in the day, and I went. I seen very poor attendance at the Matter of fact, Fitzgerald's. Mm -hmm. This was my first thing, and then then that's when I made the commitment to mu local music uh, to help you guys out, all the local musicians and whatnot. And uh, then in my first major uh, concert was uh, I'm bringing in Straight Line Stitch to the VFB Rock Club. I asked them to come in. And then from there, I um, mean, the rest of the history, I brought in Drowning Pool, Flyleaf, freaking Lacey Strom on her own, Ace mm -hmm. Freely, you know, millions, millions and millions, Saving Able, I mean, hundreds of backs, hundreds. Uh, uh, you name it, I've done, I've done it pretty much. All right, so now I'm going to give you one that's going to be kind of tough. It's going to require a little thought, and it may require a little censorship. But I want you to tell me one of your most proud stories of, of an event or uh, an artist you were able to book or you know just a show something you were able to accomplish and I want you to also share one of your worst nightmares of, of you know shows in the past and you don't have to mention band names or anything if you don't want to I, oh I will <laughs> I don't mind running a, ba a band under the freaking bus uh, my most proud concert I would have to say God, there was so many of them. I've sold out BFB. I've sold out Wildcatters. But, you know, Scout Bar's been sold out with me. But in the one that stands out in my mind, and because of the battle with cancer I got going on, is the Sir Mix-A-Lot concert. It was right as COVID was hitting, mm -hmm. March 13th. Um, I just literally had surgery to remove tumors out of my colon. Mm -hmm. And I, they sewed me up. And I, not, but two days later, I get out of the hospital that Wednesday, that Friday. I remember. That <laughs> Friday, I stood at the side of the stage and did my job. Mm -hmm. Because, you know what, it was a responsibility, a commitment I made to the public. I made the commitment to serve Mix-A-Lot's management to be there to handle him because it was his first trip there. And usually he does the, you know, Woodlands Pavilion and shows like that. So I wanted to make sure it went off without a hitch. But during that show... Sir Mixelot got on stage, and he uh, shouted out for me, you know, to the crowd, and told him, look, you know, this is a, a true leader. This guy just got out of surgery and gave him my story, and with that, he said he will be back in 2021 for me. So, really, that's probably my proudest concert, uh, not to discredit Drowning Pool or Saving Able yeah, or yeah. anybody else. that I've, I've, I love all my bands, all everybody's ever come across me, even the ones I hate, you know, like Plain White Tees, y'all are trash, I will never bring <laughs> you guys in again, your, your career's over, but y'all gave me hell that day, and I'll never forget the problems y'all caused for that show, y'all thought y'all were too good for ba uh, bass, and sending me freaking lists at the end of it, y'all were trash, Plain White Tees was the, most, uh, the, the worst experience ever, that, <laughs> I'll never look them again. Or Ace Frilly. <laughs> Ace Frilly. Walking out on a meet and greet. Ace Frilly, you're trash too. You know, that's my book. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to go with uh, one more kind of question. And, and, you know, it's something that I know is close to your heart. Uh, it's also close to my heart. Uh, so, I mean, you've been sober for quite a while. And you work in an industry where that is not the norm there are tons of people that are out there you know you know out there you know living the 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 show life you know that you know may be going through some some stuff and you know as a part of that it's very hard for them to stay sober what advice or encouragement can you give them from your own experience to help them you know to better themselves not saying that 
drinking is bad or anything, but there are people who have actual problems, and you know, you got help, I've gotten help before. Right. So, I mean, the there's always hope. Uh, that's how I look at AA, and uh, you know, NA, and the programs that I, I reach out with. With the I go to juveniles. Well, prior to COVID, I would go to juveniles to speak and other places to be a guest speaker. Because of my career, it gives everybody hope. Right. Um, and the biggest thing is you got to hold on to hope, and you got to be you got to dig within. You know, in my career, before my career started, you're talking to a guy that was uh, convicted. Uh, I was looking at, back in 2005, I was looking at two, uh, 25 to life. Mm. Because the system was ready to throw, write me off. I've had so many assault charges, so many DUIs, the whole nine yards. And they had enough, they said enough's enough. So, but Judge Carter, the um, Harris County District uh, Courts, Says, you know what? I believe you can change. And with that, it, it just struck home. And I've run with it since. And I know, uh, in my position, and just like I'm very outspoken with the my, what goes on with my cancer, I, I'm, um, I know my position in the music industry, and I understand that, you know, people follow me, and have hope. You know, feel mm -hmm. feed off the what I've done, and and. That's the biggest thing in the world is you got to dig within. You got to dig within and say, okay, I can change. Because you're talking to a guy that was looking 25 to life in 2005 to probably, well, one of the most successful right now uh, promoters in Houston. Yeah. Uh, and I've led a lot of great concerts, met a lot of great people. I have a lot of great sponsors, you know, that, that back me because of my changes and how my beliefs. So. That would be probably his hope. I would say hope. Uh, do I talk? Dude, there's one band I, because of anonymity, I cannot name the person, but we text back and forth all the time. Mm -hmm. One of the big nationals that I work with. Mm -hmm. We text back and forth all the time because he's in the, in the AA. Mm -hmm. He's got eight years right now. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, he came to me at our show looking for a meeting. Huh. And of course, with. COVID and everything, there was no meat available, so we sat in my truck and did a meeting. Nice. You know, because that's what that man needed right. to perform that night is to get his head clear. Huh. And now we text back and forth. So there's a lot of those guys out there. I talk to a lot of them all the time. Very cool. So, yeah. So hope and dig within. Very cool. So I guess with that, you know, I, I just from a personal standpoint, point, I just you know, want to thank you for all that you've done for... The Houston scene for Houston businesses, for Wildcatter, for BFE, for even Acadia and uh, Scout Bar. You know, thank you as a Houston musician, and uh, <clears throat> we're here with you. I did want to say thank you, of course, to Audio Realm Studio, the Westfall Office, Tony Saturday Seasonings, Alamos Tamale, Enduring Tattoo, American Tattoo, all my different sponsors that come across the board time after time. And, and they're there. And they get down in the mud. Like we got the ACC thing kicking off. Tony Saturiz and Alamo Tamale both stepped up. Said we'll cook food and donate the proceeds to cancer awareness. And where you know. And to help out. Things like this wouldn't be possible without all my sponsors. And, and all the belief that I have from the Houston community. So with that said. We love you guys. I will be promoting like i said i'll be still signing shows and helping wildcatters and bfe and scout bar and acadia 19th 19th hole i know it's going to be announcing a show soon so i mean i know we're going to be doing a lot of stuff but i just won't be that guy at the show every single time you come out with that peace and love